WCNC Charlotte's chief meteorologist, Brad Panovich, always... Thumbs up if everybody's good. Um, thank you for coming out. Uh, we'll try to make this brief. Uh, my name is uh, Justin Bamberg. I'm a state representative in House District 90. Uh, work with Bamberg Legal. Um, joined by Adam Ness of my firm, Attorney Taylor Bell of the Jeff Coat firm, uh, Tammy Beeson, and her son Trevor Mullinax. Um, by now, everybody has seen. Uh, what can only be described as an absolutely horrific officer-involved shooting that took place. It took place approximately two years ago. Um, and uh, I guess today or, or late yesterday was the first time that uh, the public or anybody's actually seen the video. Um, but we want to fill in some gaps. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to walk you through kind of what led to us uh, ending up in the field uh, back here. Um, and it starts... I believe two days before, um, Trevor had some issues with his girlfriend. Um, there was an incident that took place uh, one evening. He kicked the door. Um, it led to uh, him being charged with burglary. Uh, it didn't steal anything. It wasn't that. That charge actually, in fact, got dropped uh, because it was nonsense. Uh, but Trevor was just in a really dark place, um, and he had been contemplating suicide, uh, mental health, is a very, uh, very big thing uh, all across the state of South Carolina in this country. And, and he was contemplating killing himself. It's sad, it's unfortunate. Um, he had talked with family members and friends. Um, the day of the incident, Trevor ends up going to his grandmother's grave site. Um, his mom, Tammy, finds that out. Uh, she, in fact, leaves this house, gets in her car to drive to go uh, to the gravesite to look for Trevor. Um, and Trevor happens to pull into the driveway in his pickup truck. And he drives uh, back to the field that you see on video. Um, there is a uh, 911 call. Um, and during this time, Tammy is talking to her son. And she's at the side of that truck. Um, you know, there's no, no risk to Tammy. There's, there's no risk. Um, of anybody getting hurt other than Trevor dealing with his mental illness, m mental sickness at the moment, his thoughts of killing himself. And she talks with him for about three or four hours, y'all. Three or four hours a mother is trying to talk to her son and tell him, you have a reason to live, you have a son, we love you, we care about you. And that conversation is going good, right? Trevor hasn't done anything to harm himself yet, and she's just talking to him. There's a 911 call that is placed uh, for a wellness check. You'll hear a little bit more about that later. Um, Attorney Bell's gonna, gonna tell you about that. Um, but just know that uh, there were massive communication problems. Um, law enforcement pulls up and you see what happens. And I can tell you right now, um, Trevor absolutely did not ever point any firearm or anything like that at these officers. Uh, there was a shotgun in that vehicle. It was never pointed at them. Um, 50 shots, almost 50 shots. And I want you to think about that. Almost 50 shots fired at somebody who was in need of help. A citizen who was in need of help. And people caring about him, like his mother did. Almost 50 shots, okay? Trevor was shot multiple times. His hands were up. He turned. He wasn't a threat to anybody. He got shot in his hands. He got shot in the back of his arm. He took multiple rounds to the back of his head. Smack dab. There was a round that hit him smack dab in the middle of the back of his head. Another shot hit him in the back at the base of his head. And I'm sorry guys, almost 50 shots, including to the back of somebody's head, that person's not a threat. 
Never seen anybody get shot in the back of the, the head who's a threat to law enforcement or anybody else. You don't get shot in your hands with your hands up if you're pointing a gun at law enforcement. That's not how that works. What's that movie where the, the person could bend bullets? That's not real life, y'all. This was a, it was unjustified. It was an excessive use of force, right? And if there are any questions, SLED came in, the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division came in and conducted an investigation back then. <clears throat> and there is a deputy who was on scene who did fire at Trevor. And if he fired, I believe it was four or five shots. And what that officer says is, I realized he was hit. I saw him with his hands up and I quit shooting. I saw him with his hands up and I quit shooting. Those are the words of one of the officers on scene. Meanwhile, in hit that officer's body camera footage, you see two of his buddies continue to mag dump into the front windshield. Approximately 10 more rounds, 20 rounds. Excessive. You know, no officers were charged. We get it. We live in a state. You're talking about a system where uh, prosecutors have to look at this stuff, and then you're questioning whether there was an attempted murder or murder. That's that's a almost borderline insurmountable, insurmountable level to to tackle. That is exactly why, right, and myself, for those who don't know, I served on a joint task force to analyze criminal justice policy uh, back during the last presidential election, right? If Joe Biden became president, what type of policy should the White House have in criminal justice? And one thing that was discussed by myself, Attorney General Eric Holder, right, Vanita Gunta, who now is second in charge at DOJ, is this idea of how can we curve, how can we curve the excessive use of deadly force and the excessive use of force that we are seeing from law enforcement on citizens who don't deserve it. South Carolina, much like most of the states in this country, they don't have an excessive force criminal statute. They don't have an excessive force statute, period. All of the protections that exist for people like Trevor and Tammy are federal laws. And we need to look at that. We really need to look at that. Um, at this point, I'm gonna let Miss Tammy come um, and speak to you all, Miss Tammy. <clears throat> Uh, well, first of all, I want to thank you all for coming out. Um, I am a little nervous, so you'll have to overlook that, please. Um, but, you know, I just want everybody to know that I, I've said before that as a mother, there are not enough negative words to tell you how I felt that day. You know, all we wanted was to get some help for my son. Um, regardless of anything else that was going on, we just we just wanted him to get some help. We wanted him to realize that things were kind of dark looking right then, but they were going to get better. Um, and never in my life have I ever, ever imagined that I would be put in danger by someone on the law enforcement. Like, I, I've never... I've never thought that, you know, I have always supported police. I, I believe in the police. I still believe in the police, but I can tell you that it's hard to believe in the police when you, they destroyed everything that I believe in that day. And it has taken me a very long time to try and recover from that. I'm still recovering. Um, it's hard to live in this county where this happened at and wonder if the officer who gets behind me on a road, even though I'm not doing anything wrong, but if I wonder if that's the one who almost killed me that day, or if I wonder if that is the one who tried to kill my son that day. And so that is very hard. And it's a daily thing that I deal with and I will probably always deal with. I can't imagine ever getting over it. And I, I really just want all of this to shed a light that no mother should ever have to go through that. No mother should have to think for six hours that their child is dead and that they were brutally murdered in front of their eyes. 
Um, and no one is above the law. Just because they are law enforcement, they does not give them the right to do what they did. And I, you know, I want to be able to, to believe in law enforcement and to get back my belief that they're not going to hurt you because at this moment in time, I promise you that if there was somebody breaking into my house, there's no way that I'm calling 911 to come and help me. And, and I just, I hope that we can use this situation and this tragic situation to help bring that to light and bring some justice to other people also. And she mentioned a 911 call. That 911 call was for help. That was a wellness check. That was a wellness check from his cousin and from his buddy that said, we're just trying to get our buddy some help. Dispatch was given Trevor's cell phone number, Tammy's cell phone number. Never once were they ever reached out to. Law enforcement drove down that dirt road down there. I don't know how fast, but you can watch it in the video. Never once was their de-escalation ever attempted. Never once did they try to contact anybody that was down there when they had the cell phone number of his mother and him. There was a gun. <clears throat> there was a gun in the vehicle. It was a shotgun. It was a shotgun. And the only purpose of that shotgun was he was contemplating suicide at that point. Never once was that shotgun pointed at anyone. Never once was that shotgun used in an aggressive manner there was no threats of anyone there the charge right now my client is innocent of we wait our day in court for that charge there's very limited things that he can speak on right now because of that this charge has been pending for nearly two years now and he's innocent of that and we look forward our day in court in that charge My name is Trevor Mullinax, as everyone knows. Um, I would like to thank everyone for being here and actually getting some light on this story. Um, mental health is absolutely a huge issue in everyone today and needs to be taken seriously. Um, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. I hate that I have to be the face of it this month, but if it helps even one single person <laughs> in this world to not have to go through what me and my family have. I'm okay with it. Thank you. So we're about to wrap up here, um, but there, there's a, something important uh, with this situation in, in any situation, right? Is, um, and if you read the lawsuit, we, we say that these officers went out there like John Wayne Cowboys. And that's exactly what, it, they came out there like gunslingers. You had this 911 call. We just want to get our buddy some help. That's the quote from the call. We just want to get our buddy some help. And instead, it turns into almost 50 rounds going down range. You know, and ask yourself, right? Law enforcement officers have to do firearms qualifications, right? Every year to keep their, to keep their duty pistols they have to qualify how many times has an officer gone to qualify and shot at a target with another person standing right beside it is there a single law enforcement officer in this state who goes to weapons qualifications and the instructor stands anywhere other than behind them they don't go stand by the target and say shoot at this target and the reason they don't do it is because it's stupid this lady could have been dead that day and nobody cared. None of the officers cared. They didn't care about her and they definitely didn't care about Trevor and that's sad. The video show when the officers pull up, they stop at the house first and they get out of their cars and all of them got their guns out. All of them got their guns out and they're talking to each other and they talk to his grandfather who's on oxygen. And they coordinate, well, you're going to ride with me. And they take the time to take stuff out of the front passenger seat of their vehicles, put it in the back so that folks can ride together. And not once did any of them say, all right, guys, we need a game plan. They said that, that Trevor could be back there 
he's suicidal. All right, this is what we're gonna do. Three of y'all, draw your weapons and be ready. I'm gonna take a second to talk to him. Five seconds. That time right there, five seconds, is all it would have took and none of this would have happened. But instead, they jumped out of their cars, simultaneously, right, verbal salad, four cops yelling random things. She's standing there, y'all. There, Nobody was at risk until the cops put them at risk. And we, we really got to look at this stuff. We really got to look at this stuff because both, I tell Trevor all the time, I don't know what it is, maybe he don't either, but God has some plan for him to still be here because to be shot that many times, eight or nine times, including three times in the head, again, here, directly in the back and at the base of his skull, it is nothing short of divine intervention that he's here. And if you watch the video full length, it's disgusting the degree of callousness that was shown to this family after the shooting. You use deadly force, you're not a death squad. You're supposed to try to help people, even if you got to shoot them. Your purpose is not to kill citizens. Your purpose is to protect yourself and others. And then if you got to use force, then you try to save life. Your job is to save life. And they handcuffed this guy who was on his way out with three bullet holes in his head, and then they handcuffed his mama. They treated her like a criminal. It's disgusting. So with that said, we're happy to take, take some questions if anybody has any. So uh, you have, it's, it's technical legal stuff. You have a two year statute of limitations on state torts, i.e. what we filed, gross negligence, things of that nature. You have three years for federal civil rights violations. There's a federal lawsuit that will be forthcoming for the violation of his U.S. constitutional rights. Uh, but part of the issue is because when they realized he wasn't gonna die, they charged him, okay? And that charge was pending. And we were hopeful that that would be resolved prior to us getting into the civil stuff but you run up on time and you got to do what you got to do. I'm coming. Talking about the rendering aid and that he's receiving, can you tell me how long it takes for any aid to be given to Trevor? Was there an ambulance on the scene? Because knowing that they're coming to somebody who was having a mental health crisis, did they bring an ambulance to the scene? And how long did it take to get him medically there? There, there, was, uh, the, uh, there was no effort to address mental illness or suicide prevention or hey, we have a citizen who, and if, if you understand mental illness and suicide, okay, and, and it's hard to talk about, but this is a real thing and it has to be aired out. Most people who talk about suicide don't wanna die. That's why they talk about it. It's an internal cry for help. The people who wanna die, oh, they just do it. And you find a note after the fact, right? There's no, I'm gonna do this, I'm thinking about this. Those are cries for help. It doesn't take rocket science to figure that out. Law enforcement should know that. And there were no efforts to address the mental health aspect. There were no efforts at suicide prevention. They showed up prepared to do to Trevor what he was talking about possibly doing to himself. And they left him there, you know? And my personal belief is that dead men don't talk. Dead men don't talk. Trevor can't, Trevor can't say, no, I never pointed a gun at y'all if he's dead. And, and it's, it's, it's sad. It's the definition of deliberate indifference to him. Let me, uh, get, and then I'll come to you. Uh, I, I do have some questions. One is specifically, some of us were actually out here when this all happened back in 2021. Uh, we saw the response that was not only on the video, but also that was out here at the time. Um, fair thing to ask, do you feel that the York County Sheriff's Office response uh, as far as the amount of deputies that were out here, was it proportionate? Because it seemed like an awful lot that were out here for a blood like this. <laughs> That's because I think they completely ignored the welfare check part and honed in on, oh, we have a warrant for this fellow. 
right? I think they ignored all of that, and it wasn't proportionate. And and when you do when you do come to a wellness check, again, time and space are your friends in law enforcement. You don't go pull straight up to the front of the vehicle, and you definitely don't. If you watch, one of these officers literally had his gun in his hand and was trying to open the door of the cruiser before it even stopped moving. It's horrible. Second question, we know that there was a flood investigation because it is, it is proper procedure in officer involved shootings. Um, the videos that you received, are they basically from flood at this point or did it come from their investigation or is this part of the discovery process we're doing for the law? You want to? So part of it comes from discovery. Uh, part of it comes from our clients. Um, so that's where it comes from. We received these dash cam footage as part of uh, the sled investigation, which was part of the criminal investigation in clearing the officers. So I requested copies of those files as well. Um, and, and we've reviewed that as well. Knowing that those officers were cleared of criminal charges, are you aware of any I requested that file and York County wanted to charge me, I believe, nearly a thousand dollars in Freedom of Information Act to get that file, which they probably had already pulled. So I foregoed that uh, and we will get that at the appropriate time. Sir, but have you uh, been treated for, are you getting treated for your So it, any questions directed towards him, I would appreciate okay. being directed towards me. As I mentioned, we, yeah. we've, we've been dealing with this for a, a while now, right? Okay. And that's why, you know, we were coming up on the statute. I mentioned that we were hoping to get this resolved, but he's still got the matter pending, which I represent him on. So any questions okay. directed towards Trevor? Okay. Uh, and I, I don't mean that to be rude at all, but just direct towards so me. Now I'm directing to you. Yes. Is, are, are you, is, is Trevor being treated for this, his mental illness now or in the past? And can, he, can he speak about This is something he's been dealing with for some time now, and his family has uh, been dealing with uh, in regards to his mental health. This is not something new that day. Uh, it, this is, you know, something the family that all families have to deal with in America that I've dealt with with my family. Uh, that I think each of us behind these cameras can look at and say there's somebody in our family uh, that struggles with depression, struggles with self-worth, what people think about them, whether they're doing what they can for their child, the best father that they can be, whether they're the best mother that they can be. And, and May, again, is, uh, you know, Mental Health uh, Awareness Month, and, and this just targets that, that we should all get counseling, whether we're strong out, outside it externally internally we all need to speak with somebody sometimes so it's safe to say that he is getting counseling correct to his point about the warrants you hear in those videos and, it, and you guys were able to hear it firsthand as well officers saying he must be arrested he has warrants even suggesting that he was suicidal because he didn't want to go to jail your response well i, I don't know what the the question lies but yes there were warrants those charges were dismissed um but they took the oh he's got warrants and overlooked the fact that this was initially was a welfare check from his cousin that said, we're just trying to get some help from our buddy. That, that's what, that's what his, his cousin and his buddy said. He, he's suicidal, we're just trying to get some help from, and that was completely ignored. Dispatch never relayed that information, the phone numbers of his mother, Tammy, his phone number, and they came here, his, his uh, grandfather who's on oxygen, kind of hard of hearing, and, and they had their guns drawn already, and grandfather may have mentioned them down there blazing down that road never game plan to hey we've got a guy that that's struggling with you know being a father struggling with you know how how he feels about himself let's talk about this let's reach out to him and have a conversation have a conversation they pull up and his mother's having a very calm conversation with him they escalated the situation from the get-go there was never any reach out of de-escalation on law enforcement's behalf. To your knowledge, does York County Sheriff's Office have a crisis intervention team at all? And then my second question would be for, for Tammy and, and for Trevor, just talking about the healing process and what you brought to your timeline um, and what you're still doing. So I am unaware. Um, it is definitely something that we hope uh, that this video uh, and this situation brings light to. I absolutely believe that that, that that should happen. And I think all law enforcement agencies should. 
law enforcement, you know, a lot of them have on the back of their cars. When I was driving here uh, out of Richland County, it says peace officer. It doesn't say police officer. It doesn't say law enforcement. It says peace officer. And peace officer means you're there to help. It means you're there to make peace. And I think that's what we should reform law enforcement to be, uh, to, to bringing help to everybody. Whether, whether they've got a warrant or not, that doesn't matter. There's still a human being. There's still somebody's son. There's still somebody's father. There's still somebody's grandchild at the end of the day. What do you hope to gain from this lawsuit uh, when it comes to everything that's been going on? Well, I, I hope it brings awareness again to mental health, uh, to the way law enforcement responds to folks that are in crisis. Um, I think that that needs to be looked into and those policies, because I, I can guarantee York County policies aren't, let's hit the gas, all jump in a couple cars and draw our guns before we're even out of the vehicle. As Justin said, his guns in his hand as he's opening the door already, there's no conversation ever had. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna let Tammy, we're gonna go back to the uh, second part of your question um, and address, you know, what, what it's been like for her uh, and her family over the last two years, and then we're going we're gonna to end on that note. Tammy? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so, honestly, I meant, for lack of better words, it's been hell on earth um, for the past two years. I now suffer with PTSD. Um, to which I do go to counseling for. Um, and I thank God for my wonderful counselor because I don't know where I would be without her. She, you know, calms me down lots of times. But once again, every day is a struggle. I mean, when you close your eyes and you see this event over and over and over again, it is not something that you can just forget about it's nothing that you can just try and stay busy with or or to try not to think about it's very difficult um and we're doing it you know we are we have a wonderful church family that prays for us prays with us we have wonderful friends that pray for us and pray with us and you know just constantly remind us of you know that they're thankful that we're still here and we're thankful that we're still here. But yeah, it's a struggle. It, the, the PTSD is a struggle and it, I, I don't know. You know, the anxiety is real. Cause like I said, you know, when you get, when a police officer gets behind you and you know, getting well, you're not doing anything wrong. So your chest should, your heart should not be leaping out of your chest. You should not be so terrified when you're not doing anything wrong. So that is ongoing, but I pray every day that it's gonna get less and less as time goes by. Thank y'all so very much. Thank you.